Wait a second, wait a second, what was that? Can you go back, can you rewind? Hey guys, it's Phoebe from Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the top 10 Cartoon Network Easter eggs. This party is fat, yo! Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We're taking a look at the references, shoutouts, and homages you might not have caught the first time around in your favorite Cartoon Network shows. Let's take a look! Frankie, have you seen my bow? No, I should have bubbled. Number 10. Everyone watches Adventure Time. Clarence. Hey, check this out. Adventure Time was one of Cartoon Network's best shows. Its perfect blend of humor, lovable characters, and deep lore made us want to stop whatever we were doing and tune in. Hey dude, we made it! Animated characters seem to love the show as much as we do. On the offbeat comedy Clarence, a character named Chad tunes into Adventure Time while on a camping trip. Over on another offbeat comedy called We Bear Bears, a student named Chloe uses the show as background noise while working on her homework. After catching these adventurous Easter eggs, we know exactly what to binge watch next. Let the real adventure begin! Number 9. Agent Ash Ketchum. Codename Kids Next Door. The destruction of coffee. The adult's energy source. You don't have to be Detective Pikachu to uncover this Pokemon reference. During an episode of Kids Next Door, the young operatives plan an attack on adult coffee shops. When the camera stops on the crowd, we see a child with a red hat and blue and black clothing scheme. His outfit is identical to Ash Ketchum's iconic clothes from the beginning of the original anime series. This kid in the crowd is either excellent at cosplay or the bona fide Pokemon trainer himself. If it really is Ash, the other operatives will want to know how he stayed 10 years old for 20 plus years. Number 8. Elderly Hanna-Barbera Characters I Am Weasel This is where your animated heroes of yesteryear spend their golden years. Over the years, the Hanna-Barbera company has created a huge roster of animated characters. I Am Weasel used a fraction of them for hilarious cameos. In the I Am My Lifetime episode, elderly versions of I Am Weasel and I Are Baboon are now living in separate nursing homes. Weasel lives with a grey Johnny Quest and a balding Dexter. Meanwhile, Baboon hangs in a home with an aging Pebbles and Bam Bam. We also see an asylum for old villains that features Ranger Smith from Yogi Bear and the red guy from Cow and Chicken. The slew of cameos was a great way to showcase Hanna-Barbera's legendary history. I don't think he belongs here either. I think they should lock him up in the old cartoon villains asylum. Number 7. Samurai Jack Action Figure – Dexter's Laboratory you are interrupting my very delicate calculations. When Dexter gets tired of working on groundbreaking inventions, he can always unwind by playing with some toys. The best action figure in his collection doubles as an awesome Easter egg. While Dexter's dad is cleaning his son's room, you can spot a Samurai Jack toy on the shelf. The action figure comes complete with his trademark sword and a permanent frown. It's a shame that the real Jack never met Dexter while he was trapped in the future. I have many questions and little time. The little scientist probably could have built the samurai a time machine in a single afternoon. I'm doomed. Number 6. Homage to a Charlie Brown Christmas – Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown! If you were making a list of the most iconic Christmas specials of all time, you'd have to include Charlie Brown. The animated Peanuts special is full of sweet moments and memorable scenery. Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends paid homage to the famous cartoon during their own Christmas special. While Mac is struggling to get in the Christmas spirit, he walks by an award-winning doghouse decorated with Christmas lights and a sad-looking Christmas tree. Upon closer inspection, it's clearly meant to be Snoopy's doghouse and Charlie's small tree. While the two Christmas specials are wildly different, both end with their main characters rediscovering their holiday spirit. Number 5. Dexter Balloon – Codename Kids Next Door Maybe we should call for backup. Call for backup if you want. The kids next door need resourceful and clever agents to defeat their adult foes. Between his insane smarts and young age, Dexter would have been an ideal recruit. While we don't know if the scientist ever joined, he got a sizable cameo on their show. During the Operation Uncool episode, an operative escapes from nerd zombies in an emergency blimp. When it launches, a large balloon version of Dexter springs out on top. Although the balloon deflates quickly, the design shows a lot of potential. If stopping adults doesn't work out, the kids could build balloons for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Number 4. Blossom Borrows Cartman's Look – The Powerpuff Girls Seriously? Outside of Adult Swim, you wouldn't expect a South Park reference on Cartoon Network. Yet, the Powerpuff Girls pulled off an innocent and hilarious gag in an early episode. 
When Blossom is thrown into a pile of clothes, she emerges looking like the foul-mouthed Eric Cartman. Seriously! Instead of swearing, she throws out a quick seriously to shout out one of his many catchphrases. Is he, seriously, little... is he seriously giving a speech right now? Hopefully a greater awareness of this wardrobe gag will pave the way for the long-awaited South Park and Powerpuff Girls team-up episode. After all, Cartman already has a superhero costume. Let's see if he can take Mojo Jojo. Please don't hurt me or anything with all your superpowers. Number three, a bookcase of Batman history, Teen Titans Go. Come on, come on, come on, you can't be in here. Teen Titans Go doesn't always rely on subtle gags, but it set up a few sneaky bonuses for Batman fans in the sidekick episode. If you look behind the picture of Batman and Robin, you'll see an entire bookcase of Easter eggs. There's the evil Scarface dummy, bandages previously worn by Batman foe Hush, the beauty cream that made Clayface, and Mr. Freeze's entire head. The darkest trophies are a crowbar next to an urn that says Robin 2. Those items reference the time Joker beat Jason Todd's Robin with a crowbar before blowing him up. That's awful bleak for a show that normally jokes about waffles. Waffles? Waffles? Waffles! Number 2. Talking Dog Billboard Samurai Jack Your world is new to me. What has happened? No, 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 no. Quite all right, quite all right. One of the most bizarre characters on the Powerpuff Girls is the talking dog. Despite being mostly in the background, he managed to get himself featured on a dog food billboard in Townsville. The same ad is later seen on Samurai Jack. After Jack is flung into the distant future by the evil Aku, he walks through a barren wasteland with talking dogs. When they point out the artifacts they've uncovered, the same dog food billboard can be seen. Wait. If the two shows take place in the same universe, does that mean the girls were defeated by Jack's nemesis, Aku? Geez, and we thought the Robin reference was dark. I'm afraid terrible punishments are exacted. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Stupid bowling with its stupid shoes. <laughs> He's having a heart attack. <laughs> we need a doctor. Must be disturbed from his slumber. He becomes quite vicious when alarmed. I'm counting on it. Number one, Dexter in class with the Powerpuff Girls. The Powerpuff Girls. I can't disprove your stupid imaginary friend's existence. Even a boy genius like Dexter needs to start his education somewhere. He just so happened to have some extraordinary kindergarten classmates. In the Powerpuff Bluff episode, Dexter can be spotted sleeping next to the girls during their school nap time. He appears in several other episodes as either a bystander or a doll. His sister Dee Dee and her imaginary friend also receive brief appearances of their own. These cameos might have been suggested by Gendy Tartakovsky, who created Dexter's lab before working on the Powerpuff Girls. Thanks to him and his fellow animators, we may have only scratched the surface of Easter eggs on the channel. So what do you guys think? Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments below.